When I was in high school, I had quite the reputation. <laughs> Mike the Troublemaker. And let me tell you, I lived up to that reputation. <laughs> How many of you have a reputation? In the book of Acts, Stephen and Philip, two of the first deacons, Stephen had the reputation of being the first martyr. Philip, the first evangelist. Abraham Lincoln said that reputation is the shadow, character is the tree. It took me a long time to develop the character to get rid of the reputation I had in high school. I'm still working on it. <laughs> How many of you have some character flaws? <laughs> the wonderful thing about Stephen and Philip, their character was built on the power of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 6, it says they were filled with spirit, filled with the spirit and wisdom. Unfortunately, over 50 years in the church as a pastor, I've known many spirit-filled people who had no wisdom whatsoever. I pray today that the power of the Holy Spirit would grant you the wisdom to develop the character, to have a reputation that is glorious to God. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, today, open our eyes to your word. Teach us your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. If you look at letter A on your handout, Philip at Jerusalem, he was spirit selected. So was all of those deacons. Spirit, Philip, excuse me, was filled with the spirit and full of wisdom. When I was pastoring Calvary Chapel in San Pedro, had a wonderful ministry there. A lot of the youth with a mission, uh, people from the Anastasis, the Mercy Ship was home ported there. Had a lot of missionary activity, a lot of great things happening. And so we had people come through our ministry that we're ministering all over the world. We had a missionary speaker. Oh man, it was wonderful. Had a little gal in our ministry. She felt called to the mission field. She was definitely filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, she manifested street ministry, prayed for people. They were healed. It was wonderful. So she called me up one day so terribly excited. She I got to come over and I got to see you right now. So she came over and told Judy and I the story. She said, I'm going to Columbia. That's where God's calling me to Columbia. I said, well, how do you know? She said, well, the Spirit of God told me and showed me. He told you and showed you. How did he show you? He said, well, last night I went to bed. There was a little spider up in the corner of my bedroom. Overnight, he weaved this web. So I got up in the morning, and it looked like something, but I wasn't sure. So I got out my atlas, and I went through my whole atlas comparing that cobweb to the nations of the world, and it turned out that cobweb was exactly like Columbia. And that's where I'm going. And she went. She went, and she actually had a pretty good ministry there. So are you a cobweb wisdom person? <laughs> now the rest of the story was, we prayed over her. We had a lot of people that said, basing your call on a cobweb 
There's no biblical evidence, I don't think, for that. Though God has done some strange things, and we won't deny it if that is what's in your heart. But I got to tell you, I've seen well-meaning, spirit-filled believers make decisions that were so unwise that the consequences of the unwise decision was drastic <clears throat> for their life, their ministry, and their family. None of us have full wisdom. What's the Bible say? The beginning of wisdom is what? The fear of God. If you don't have holy fear, a lot of people cheapen that and call it reverence. I didn't reverence my earthly father. I feared him. Do you know why? He had a razor strap that really hurt. I loved him. He had a lot of flaws. But he taught me that reverence and fear are combined with loving authority. I heard somebody on TV this morning say, <clears throat> you're never closer to God than when he's disciplining you. You're never closer to God when he's disciplining you. For me, the secret is to know when he's disciplining you so you can get the benefit of that. Philip, in this passage, demonstrates both being filled with the Spirit and wisdom. Verse 4, Therefore those who were scattered went everywhere teaching the word. <clears throat> then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. Now I put the map on the handout for a reason. <laughs> I love it. If you notice, Jerusalem's in the middle. Samaria is above. Now, most of us, when we do map writing, reading, we'd say, well, Samaria is above Jerusalem, so if you went to Samaria, you'd say, I'm going up to Samaria, right? But you'll remember that in a Jewish culture, Jerusalem was the center. You always went down or up, and Jerusalem was the center. So Philip went down to Samaria, even though it's up. He went down because of, Is of uh, Jerusalem being in the center. This is out of, after the scattering of the church in the aftermath of uh, Stephen's martyrdom. Verse 6, And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing miracles which he did, for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame and healed. And there were great joy in that city. Now here's, remember, these guys were originally picked to serve tables. <laughs> As Stephen's a martyr, Philip now is going on an evangelical campaign and the key is he is led by the Spirit. Verse 26 And now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying Arise, go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So notice he's up in Samaria. Look at the map. Jerusalem the middle. There's Samaria. So he's in Samaria. The Spirit of the Lord says go down that road through Jerusalem and head to Gaza. It's a deserty area. Verse 27, So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all of the treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. He was writing, reading Isaiah the prophet. Verse 29, Then the Spirit 
said. Now notice in verse 26, it says, now an angel of the Lord spoke. Verse 29, then the uh, spirit said, go down to verse 39 for a moment, the spirit of the Lord. So the spirit is moving here. In verse 26, the definite article, the angel of the Lord is not used. Some see these as a theophany. We're not sure Jesus is some of, in some of these. Some it's just the Holy Spirit or it's the Spirit of God. The point is that the Spirit of God is leading, leading our brother Philip in ministry. So back to verse 29. Then the Spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him, heard him reading the prophet Isaiah, and said, Do you understand what you're reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up with him. And now when they went down the road, they came to some water. Now in between 31 and 36, Philip teaches him the Messiah from the Old Testament. Verse 36, and now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe with your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and were baptized and baptized him. What a wonderful picture of spirit guidance. It reminds me of so many times in my life where the Holy Spirit has said to me, go talk to that person, go pray for that person, go over here, go over there. I would say about, now let me back up. Five years ago, maybe 20% of the time I would follow that leading. I was real poor at that. Judy is not poor. The Holy Spirit tells Judy to do something as silly as it may appear. She will do it. Stand up, stand up in a movie theater with 300 people and say, Jesus is Lord! After somebody on the screen cursed. You know my story. I don't go to movies with my wife. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Some of us have a natural built-in boldness and protection for the Word of God. And when people misuse it, it offends us. The problem is within the church today, people are no longer offended by it. You cannot watch a movie anymore hardly without cursing and using God's name. We've become so accustomed to it. Even us spirit-filled Christians who should know better, that's the wisdom part, should know better go along with the crowd. Everybody else is doing it, doesn't bother me. My conscience begins to become seared against that. And the enemy gets a door into my soul. Verse 39, I love this. <laughs> yeah, man. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. This is great. You're standing there one moment, and the next moment you're somewhere else. The word caught there is harpozo, which is the same word in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, for the rapture. Philip was raptured, not to heaven, but he is raptured to Azotus. Azotus. So that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found in Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Now look at the map. See where Gaza is? That's where 
the Ethiopian was baptized. See a Zotus above it? Notice that the trail has dots. There's no, <laughs> there's no solid line because Philip didn't walk up there. He was caught up there. Now, I've had some similar experiences. Maybe you've had this. You're driving in the car and you're headed somewhere and you're so caught in thought. When you get there, you don't even remember driving there. No, that didn't go over with too many. Well, let me try this. Some of us wake up in the morning and before we know it, it's night and we don't know what happened during the day. How about that? Maybe that works better. <laughs> oh, man. Well, this is a miracle. I love miracles. Why is, why is God doing this with Philip? I believe that Philip's character, which is typified by being spirit-filled and full of wisdom, he could trust that Philip would make right decisions. <clears throat> Lastly, we move to chapter 21, verse 8. On the next day, we who were Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. Now this man, man had four virgin daughters who prophesied, and we stayed there many days. Well, I know Philip's a godly man because he had four daughters. <laughs> what a handful that would be. How he kept them virgin, I don't know. Today, it appears there is no holiness, no righteousness, no honor of the virgin daughter, the virgin son, the holy son, the righteous son. The character of Philip was so powerful that his life became the life of his kids. His life became the life of the kids. Have you ever heard the phrase, the acorn does not fall far from the tree? My daughter reminded me of that this week when I was criticizing her for something. <laughs> hey dad, remember the acorn does not fall from the tree. And then I wrote back, I blamed it on my mother. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us, you know. Philip, when he gets to Caesarea, he's there for 15, 20 years. Probably builds a house church, but he still evangelizes in the area. His reputation as Philip the evangelist came as a result of his character, quality, in the power of the Spirit and wisdom. The two things I pray that the church would get or needs more than anything else are these two characteristics. They're not normally called uh, character traits, but in the Spirit they are. You can have a great personality, all kinds of things, and you know, your, rep your reputation is what People think about you. Who cares about that? More importantly, what does God think of you? What's your reputation with God? My character, as Lincoln said, my reputation is the shadow. Character is the tree. It's a lifelong process building godly character but you can't do it if you're not filled with the Spirit and you're not filled with wisdom. And wisdom starts with the fear of God, reverence, honoring, honoring Him in the way I live, the way I talk. 
it's a powerful thing to be found in the hands of God. A powerful thing to be found in the hands of God. But it's also the most wonderful thing to be found in the hands of God. Heavenly Father, this message in the life of Philip has so many insights for us. None of us here are perfect. We all have character flaws in our life. But Father, to the extent that we would submit to the filling and the power of the Holy Spirit and submit to the power of godly wisdom, you would guide us. You would guide us. And the consequences would be glory to God. The consequences would be glory to God. My reputation with those around me would be, oh my, he, she, they're living to the glory of God. Look at what they're doing. Look at the way they're acting. Look at the way they have submitted to the hand of God. Help each of us here, Lord. We come to you, we ask that you would heal up our souls, our spirits. Heal up our past. Let the power and truth of God arise. Let healing wash over us. Let wisdom wash over us. And O Holy Spirit, come and fill us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together.